Hi Taurus, welcome to your April 2017 love reading. It's Rena here. And boy, the winds have been really kicking up outside. So I wonder if it will be caught on the audio. In any case, as the month begins, you do have that Venus retrograde still affecting you. And you are ruled by Venus. Venus only retrogrades every year and a half. So it is a little bit more noteworthy than some quicker transits and and more frequent transits is what I really mean to say. Um, so it starts in your 12th house for the first few days in Aries and then goes back into your 11th house. So the 12th house can be past lives. You may hear from someone that you have a karmic connection with, maybe a soulmate, twin flames, past life, and you are to evaluate this relationship on the merits of that relationship and only the merits. So d does this relationship um, seem healthy to you? Or is it just that you are caught up in the idea of a twin flame situation? When Venus goes into your tw 11th house, it's going to be the house of hopes and wishes and friendships, groups. You may... Um, go on a date with someone who is a friend of a friend and maybe you'll hit it off. Uh, you may meet somebody in a group that you belong to, somebody romantic, a romantic partner. So there's always a possibility of meeting in that way. Or you may, may meet the person of your dreams. The 11th house is the luckiest house. So that's pretty cool. Okay. The theme of your love reading is the Hierophant card. The Hierophant card does connect to Taurus. So it may be that you're focusing on yourself for a change and not just being codependent and thinking about a partner. You may be like honoring yourself. Um, the Hierophant card is also about marriage and other institutions in our society. So you may be thinking about marriage, um, a current marriage that you want to get married if you're single and that you don't want to just date around, which I think is, is pretty consistent with many Taurus people, Taurus being a fixed earth sign. You like the tangibility of a marriage certificate and the constancy that you feel with um, the idea of marriage that it feels like something that you can count on but what I would say is that you can't count on these things the the whole idea of these you know, parts of our life that the Hierophant represents, like the banking system, the education system, the government, marriage, all these things. Right now, um, because of certain things that are happening, and yes, there are astrological events, but even beyond that, you have to look at our spiritual evolution or, um, you know, where, where our destiny is to take us. We can't count on the outside world. And if you put too much faith into something outside of yourself, um, you're leaving your well-being up to other people. And so I say that because of the, the card right under it. And usually I don't read this um, as the next card, but I'm going to. This is the higher message, the death card. I see that you may have started a relationship with another earth sign 
Maybe it's an extramarital relationship. Maybe you've met somebody. Maybe you met somebody at a new job that you just started. Uh, as evidenced by the Ace of Pentacles. I'm not even going to hold that up because it's harder to um, <laughs> grab it. Um, but yeah, maybe you met somebody and on the job. And maybe you haven't consummated the relationship or even... Uh, told them how you feel, but maybe you it, it caused you to question your own relationship. And you realize, I think what's happening is you realize, if you really are honest with yourself, that the marriage was dead before you met that other person. That it's not the cause of anything. But you may be still caught up in the idea of you know, the fantasy of what marriage represents to you. And so it's not that easy to just like acknowledge that your relationship may be dead. It just isn't. You're actually going to have a full moon in your seventh house, which is where the marriage sector is. And this is happening on May 10th, actually. So it's a little bit in the future, but that might be the final uh, death knell, or it just might be a time when you find out something about your partner, and then that hastens the ending of the relationship. Or maybe you have a new appreciation for your partner. That's always possible, too. But when I see the death card, I see that change is inevitable. And if you try to hold on, that is where the pain will come in. That if you just accept the, the fact that nothing is permanent in this impermanent world, um, then you don't suffer. In the past position, we get the Ace of Pentacles, as I mentioned. And so you may have had a job interview. You may have had, I mean, a, a new job. You may have met somebody um, who is an earth sign a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and you just see how different you feel around this person. The The death card can literally uh, represent a Scorpio. And now, and this person might even be a Capricorn because I associate the number 10, the 10th house is Capricorn's house, but an earth sign. Um, this is also about having a lot of material prosperity. It could be somebody helping you out in your family financially. And, you know, but this could be family money. So that may be what's keeping you from getting divorced. You may be afraid of losing that kind of a lifestyle. You, you know, it may be a very nice lifestyle and you think, you know, I could just have an affair and then keep that lifestyle. So you may be kind of going over in your head, what is the best thing to do? With people who are um, single, because someone, you know, told me to, you know, reminded me to acknowledge single people. Um, as I said, you may have fantasies about what marriage entails. Or I might not have said that for this. I might be thinking about my last reading. What I would say is that the Hierophant represents these structures in our society, but those structures are from the world. So the death card is asking of you on the spiritual level to let go of those, you know, conditioned ideas about what you're supposed to be doing um, in a relationship because they may be outmoded, they may not serve you, and you may have unrealistic expectations in relationship. Right now you may be doing very well career-wise and yet you want a relationship. I did get that for the Aries love reading as well, so I think that's why I confused it because there's similar themes in some way. What crosses you is the Eight of Cups. So it's hard for some people to walk away 
from a relationship. Maybe you're tempted by the affluence. Maybe you're just um, really set in your ways and it's hard for you to change and you don't want to kind of have to go through all of that unpleasant feeling of you know starting over again maybe you really do care about your partner in some ways but you know that it's not compatible overall it's just that it confuses you because you know that you feel um, some nice feelings towards this person as well I would say though that this card represents uh, in its upright position, walking away from that which no longer um, fulfills you emotionally. So the challenge, I guess, is for you to really value the need to be in a relationship with somebody that you can connect with on the soul level. As an earth sign, you tend to value logic and, you know, being rational. And you may not even enjoy that, that aspect of being overly emotional, being very concerned about, um, you know, being, being very, I was going to say lovey-dovey. No, you can be affectionate. You can be lovey-dovey. But just being overly so in that direction. You may, um, there may be a part of you that is afraid to, to be like Scorpio and get down deep and bear your soul to another person. And so you find that you do not have the partner that nourishes you emotionally, that you may have a very uh, practical, you know, um, smoothly run, run relationship, but it's more suited for an office than an actual household. The advice then is the, the high priestess. So it is about connecting with your higher self and understanding that when you put yourself in a situation, you may not be in a, in a, in a, like, um, an abusive situation. And that may be what is causing part of the problem too, because you may say, I don't have the right to leave. You know, this person is nice to me. This person is a good provider, a very good provider, but I'm not in love with this person. And you can't make a case for leaving. Um, and what I would say is that your emotional connection is everything. It's everything in the job that you do and it's everything in your private life. If you do not feel emotionally connected to what you do, then a lot of times you will just be going through the motions of your life and you will not, you may be able to function, but you won't be able to really live. And that's the thing, you know. It is like, you know, you look at this, it's like being a zombie, okay? And um, it's just not a way to live. Now, that's my take on things. You may compare it to your childhood and say, this is like heaven compared to my childhood. Um, so why would I reject this person who is such a caring person? And the only thing I can say about that is, you're right, I don't believe in rejecting people. I don't think that you are rejecting when you walk away like this, because this person is seeking something. They're, this person's on a spiritual quest. They're not just looking for a more attractive or a wealthier partner. They're looking for someone who is going to connect with them at the deepest level. And when you find that person, if you want to call them a soulmate, go right ahead. But whatever, whoever that person is, then you feel like you can be understood and you can be yourself and you automatically relax. You're not on guard because the other person doesn't get you. The outcome is the Knight of Cups and this can be um, the kind of person that I'm talking about. The kind of person that um, understands you, appreciates you, and um, really 
you know, wants to, what was that? <laughs> the kind, there's, as I said, there's a lot of wind. But um, this is the kind of person that may be like an artist, a um, some kind of a, a very emotional person. That's their kind of orientation, is to be caring and to be understanding. And this is the kind of person that I'm talking about. So um, it takes you going within to realize that that's the kind of person that you want in your life. And so that's a great way to end the reading because it was exactly the line of reasoning I was going with, Taurus. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. If you'd like a copy of my new ebook, it's called How to Manifest Your Soulmate, please visit my online store in the link below. Take care of yourselves. Bye.